Welcome everyone to Google Summer of Code office hours. It's the 31st of March, 2021. Uh, so are there open questions, open topics that you have that you'd like to ask about? Grateful to have Gareth Evans with us. He's one of the, the agreed mentors or proposed mentors for several of the project ideas. Hi, everybody. I'm, hi. Hi, I'm Akiro Kiuchi. I have a question, so I'm here. Uh, I'm, this is my first time to join this meeting, and I'm very interested in the project called, uh, sorry, uh, Jenkins Remoting Monitoring. Uh, and I have several questions about this. It's okay. It it is though, Kiyuchi san If if you would prefer, well, why don't you go ahead and ask your questions, and we may some of them we may defer. The likely mentor for that project will be a few minutes late arriving. So go ahead and ask your questions, and if we if we cannot immediately answer them, we may ask you to ask them again later on in the meeting when Oleg joins us. Ah, uh, okay. So now uh, the project the project goal is um, to correct the metrics from the agent nodes like CPU usage or memory consumption and expose the metrics uh, in the for in the format which can be used from Prometheus or Grafana and I think uh the endpoint should be exposed on the master side not in the agent side because it is a lot, e a lot easier to access them so is this right is this correct is this correct <laughs> it, it, uh, uh, what, what, how do you think uh is I, there I, the I cross uh, yeah these are uh, both pros and cons of this idea because uh, exposing on the agent nodes can be is very is very good because uh, when exposing them on on the node side, uh, we may uh, correct the metrics even if. Uh, the connection between master and node are closed. So, but uh, I think it is not a good idea because uh, the agent side is not designed to uh, run the script while the master and node is, the connection between the master and node is done. So what, what is the opinion of, you, of your, <laughs> I, I, I suspect that the reason Oleg originally described placing an endpoint on the agent was for greater diagnosis, not that typical users would actually have access to that endpoint on the agent. I assume that the endpoint on the agent would probably be consumed by the controller and use the controller would also use that to assist rather than, rather than assuming that an endpoint would be available for for any generic user, because in many installations, Kubernetes, for instance, the endpoint or the agent is completely dis is completely inaccessible to most users. The only thing they can access is, in fact, the controller. So, so I would guess that I think it's intentional when I when I look at the description there, where it says, "Allow exposing monitoring endpoints on agents." And the reason, the rationale is because on the controller side, there's not enough data. So I assume what that would mean is the agent adds additional monitoring endpoints that are typically only accessible to the controller. 
or to someone who's opened that network access to that agent, um, then that would allow querying of more information about the agent as needed. Now, th this is one really, let, let's bring it to Oleg when he arrives, because I think it's a, an excellent question. I've given you my best guess, and let's let Oleg answer it when he, when he arrives, just to be sure. Gareth, do you have any, any other insights that you would offer on that? I'm, yeah, I'm going to defer to Oleg on that one. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't know enough about that area to comment. Okay. So, Kyuchi san, do you have other questions about remoting monitoring as a project idea? Uh, yes, I have. And yeah, uh, I think in, in my understanding, the, we cannot have a way to distribute the server load of the Jenkins master node, right? I mean, and we have a, a we, ha, we, we can distribute the load on the agent side using Kubernetes or something like that, but the Jenkins master side is not, uh, uh, we, we cannot distribute the server load on the master side. Is that right? I think what you're asking is, is there a way for a Jenkins controller to, or a master to yeah. be, to be spread across more than one node, more than mm -hmm. one pod in Kubernetes or more than one computer? And the answer is no. So yeah. is, is, was that, did I answer your question or am I answering the wrong question? Yeah, yeah, uh, it, that's what I want to ask. Yeah. And then uh, the uh, correcting the agent's metrics on the master side can be in a uh, high, high road on the master, on the uh, controller node. And can, can it be the critical problem? Ah, uh, so my assumption was that the choice to collect the metrics or not is something that would be made as needed to do diagnosis, that it, it might not be an always collect the metrics kind of thing. Now, I, I could be wrong though. So that's, that's again, a good place where we'll ask, we'll invite Oleg to answer when he arrives. Okay. Good, good, good question. And yes, you're right. We know that the Jenkins controller is, as you noted, not a horizontally scalable thing, right? We cannot create multiple copies of it concurrently working for the same on the same jobs. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions on remoting monitoring? Uh, no, no, I have. I don't have. Okay, great. Well, then let's let's be sure that we when when Oleg arrives, I'm going to bring you bring you back and ask yeah. you again to to ask your questions again because I would love to have Oleg's corrections to my poor attempts at answers. Thank you very much. Other questions? Yeah, I have actually a question uh, regarding the like the uh, proposal submission process. Like, can I ask it over here? Sure, you're you're welcome to ask. I I can't promise that we'll do more than a great answer, but please ask. Okay. Okay. So, uh, like, uh, uh, the uh, application proposal uh, like period that uh, the students can now submit the applications, uh, like for the proposals. So uh, there is one thing which, uh, like, there is one document that they are asking Google, uh, which is proof of enrollment for the institute, like for institute. So, uh, like, the issue is uh, I like add this like we are since online and we haven't like received any kind of. Uh, when it was offline or college, we used to get uh, like a signature, uh, like they want something which has signature from the authority of the institute and uh, like that. So we used to get the uh, like identification card with a signature on the, on it and uh, uh, the year of enrollment, like if, if I'm enrolled in this year, I get that. Uh, but since it's online, so there's nothing like that. But we uh, like, is there an alternative? Like, can I send a bona fide certificate to G Google for proof of enrollment? Like, 
if do you have any experience or idea about that i don't have experience that's a very good question and i think it given covid-19 it's a great question to ask in the in the general google summer of code question line because i'm sure i'm sure if you have that question there are probably thousands of people in the world who have the same question what what is acceptable as a proof of enrollment especially given your experience you said that in the past when you were physically on at the university you would receive official paperwork and it would have a signature on it whereas yeah like the, uh, sorry sorry to cut you like uh, like identification card like where, where it was written uh, we have enrolled in this year with the signature of the uh, administrator like like that but now it's not there so right so which which i think if if your university is doing that if your educational institute is doing that i am confident there are others who are doing the same thing and therefore it's very much a good question i i I'm, i'm not sure what they would accept or not accept okay. um himanshu is that proof of concept we need to do when we are submitting on um, google's website um, yeah 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 oh, yeah we need that i haven't checked and what we need what what we need is any agreement do we need signature of from university uh, yeah so i guess I, I, Um, so sorry to interrupt you, Himant. Do but yeah. if I'm not wrong, yeah, you just need a proof of admission to show that you're a bona fide student of a registered university. So there has to be some documentation, either in the form of your mark sheets or transcripts, or an ID card, or a letter of admission to the university which says that you are a student as of 2021, May of 2021. So that's all which they need to validate your academic status. That's about it. Uh, do you have any sample image like how it looks? I mean, maybe we and then we right. Um, so, so uh, right. So actually, I did a test for GSOC the other day, and they are going to load a few samples on their GSOC website soon. They haven't put up examples as of now. So maybe like wait for a day or two, let them update it on the GSOC website, and then you could look at the example. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. We can wait for a week. Yeah. Save you a lot of time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So, uh, right, Mark. So I had a question. So the other day I was trying to create a multi-branch freestyle project, but it seems that since 2017 it's been deprecated. Correct. Uh, right. But uh, I mean, I've been very new to Jenkins, right? And I'm still someone who uses Jenkins, and then I'm not developing it. So I would want to uh, understand if it's possible why it's deprecated. Because I really see a situation where. I have. I want to use freestyle projects, but at the same time, make them in a multi-branch format. And I do not have the expertise right now to write a Jenkins file for all of my repositories and branches separately. So maybe if you could help me understand that a little, that would be really cool. Sure, happy to. So the 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 simple answer is no. You can't use, and you shouldn't use. I know you don't like that answer, but that's the simple answer. You can't use, and you shouldn't use multi-branch with freestyle. You will be much happier and much much better off if you spend the spend the minutes necessary. And and it truly is relatively simple. If you're if you've already dealt with the complexities of creating freestyle jobs, you'll you'll be surprised how easy it actually. And and actually, you'll you'll likely never go back. The reality is, most of us after we we made right. the transition, particularly to declarative pipeline, it's it's pretty simple to express. So long as you're not doing Well, if you're doing terribly exotic things in freestyle projects, you really want pipeline. If you're doing simple things in freestyle projects, you want pipeline because it's simple too. Right, that makes sense. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> yeah, and and good luck. That's having been through that transition and having <laughs> having grieved myself at the deprecation of that particular thing. It was oh oh no, but I love my freestyle projects. And, and, <laughs> That's true. It's so much easier. Well, well, I mean, I was, I like my web pages, right? They're just, they were, they were nice and click and point. Don't right. forget the snippet generator. Be sure you use the pipeline syntax snippet generator. I cannot tell tell that story nearly enough. People need to use the snippet generator more and more and more. So don't miss out on the snippet generator. That's that's the magic for transition from freestyle to pipeline. Okay, I'll definitely look into it. Thanks again, Mark. Any other questions? I 
actually honestly i did the point is i can't find that proposal anymore so few so i have seen that uh, there isn't so there are, there are two problems have actually come across and since nobody else seems to have any questions we have a lot of plugins which are up for adoption but uh, they are never really claimed first of all like i've seen a lot of plugins there which are which are not up for adoption and the second so we don't really have good plugins for like g cloud and aws and let's face it even if somebody is not deploying these runners directly on google cloud or aws and they're using their own infrastructure for some reason or the other maybe security practices maybe ease of use or something there are plugins which are broken which are not maintained anymore and there's no there's no way out so if somebody doesn't know java or hudson properly then they can't really you know even fix the plugin for you know on their own accord and then you know make an open source contribution at the same time so maybe you know if we have some kind of a terminal based access allowed i know execute shell works but uh, like for example in my organization itself jenkins is installed via kubernetes it's installed as a helm chart or as a directly as a kubernetes pod i do not have the jenkins password available with me which is something which is only available during installation i could not install g cloud i had to ultimately go ahead and le- learn github actions and set it up using github actions since i could not do it using jenkins which is something i prefer myself so i mean uh, do you guys not face such issues or is it like like you guys already have other ways out to this i mean i don't know this is a very weird experience but since these are office hours i mean why not ask and share yeah fair fair question so i think what you're asking is if you don't have permission on the controller to install a plugin how can you work around that is that what you're saying uh, no no a little a little bit of a change it's more like if i do not have access to the node directly the node the gen the nodes on which jenkins is running mm-hmm. directly so while i can install plugins but if these plugins are broken then what do i do okay so so i i'm st- i'm not sure i'm understanding the question still so let, i'm going to keep asking you questions until we yeah. until we understand each other so so Definitely. it is that that there is the you need some permissions on the computer that's executing the jenkins controller that you don't have those Thank permissions you. is that correct correct Correct. I do not have permissions on the pod itself. I do not have users on the pod. I do not have permissions on the pod. Is there any way to get about it besides, you know, maybe running a dummy project and then using execute shell on that dummy project to do it? Well, and and that's that's certainly actually a healthy way to do it. If you if an agent then can do the work for you, and so have the agent do the work for you is very good. True. Um, But. I do if, not have pseudo access on it so that's where the uh, entire and, it it comes to a full circle but isn't that where then you need to negotiate for the capability either inside the controller or at at on an agent that you can use agent. to do your work true okay so oleg has joined us oleg we and so sidan i'm going to pause our our questions on jenkins administration for just sure. a minute sure oleg thank you for joining Um Akihiro Kiuchi had some questions on the remoting monitoring project idea. He asked them, I gave really poor answers and we would much prefer that to allow you to give good answers than my really poor answers. Okay, so Kiuchi san would you like to ask your questions? Yes. Hi Oleg. I'm Akihiro. Nice to meet you and I have a question about the remote monitoring and yeah, uh first there uh i think the uh the metric that uh, the metric of the nodes should be corrected on the master side and exposed it on on the end point at master node mm-hmm. and that's because the access to the node is not available can be cannot be is not available Uh, in general so even if we correct the matrix from node uh be a be a master node uh, we don't have to establish any correction direct correction to the uh agent node and very easily correct the matrix from master node okay, so, so yeah you can access matrix from uh, the master or from the controller only when the node is connected I, uh, but I'm, sure, be... i'm sorry i'm sorry i can't hear you I... audible 
Oh, okay, thank you very much. Yeah. So, uh, yes, uh, there is a connection between the agent uh, and the controller. And when this connection is active, you can connect, collect the metrics uh, from the controller side. But uh, it's not always the case. So, for example, when the uh, agent loses connection uh, to the controller, then yeah, the controller won't be able to provide any metrics. Yeah. Monitoring is still reasonable in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, we have some agent types, for example, a agent operating over Apache Kafka, uh, which is not continuously connected to the controller, is being connected on demand. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there is an instance uh, which is running continuously, which has remoting, and which could be exposed uh, to monitoring. Why we did that is uh, supporting multiple controllers. Uh, so you mean you should expose the metrics on the node side, right? Yeah, so uh, uh, exposing metrics on the controller side isn't enough for complex uh, setups. Uh, I see, I see. In this case, uh, what, what, is the, what is the, and is there any best practice to uh, run this script on the node side, agent side, uh, even if the connection between the master and agent, uh, controller and agent is lost. Yeah, so there are multiple ways. So the easiest way that uh, Jenkins controller when connected can install additional uh, uh, monitoring tools on the agent side. So basically launching uh, additional threads to expose uh, metrics there. Um, this way is doable, but this way isn't very reliable and it requires first connection. Mm -hmm. Alternative way is to just have a standalone agent or just a part of remoting. I mean, I mean Java agent, mm -hmm. which basically exposes um, the remoting instance and its metrics. Uh, uh, even if uh, it has never connected uh, to the controller. Okay, thank you. And I understand the uh, advantages of exposing the metrics on the agent side, but I think uh, it is very variable if we expose on the master side because very easy to set up for the system admins, I think. Uh, for example, when we use the Kubernetes, when we use the Kubernetes on the uh, to auto scale the agent nodes, uh, and when we want to correct the metrics uh, from agents and using like um, Prometheus, we, we need to uh, set up the uh, service discoveries and set up the configuration on the Prometheus and and it can be a hard task for system admins. And so if we, if we correct the master side, uh, we, uh, the system admins do not have to establish any uh, extra connection between nodes and the uh, monitoring servers. So just uh, tell the master endpoint to the metrics, uh, to the Prometheus. So I, uh, I think, I, I, I understand the uh, advantages of establishing the uh, endpoint on the agent side, but I want to, I love to create the plugin to uh, expose the metrics of agents on the master side. And I think it's very high variable. And what do you think of this? Well, you could do that. At the same time, you already have metrics plugin. And this metrics plugin already exposes considerable amount of data from agents. Oh, really? Yes. So if you explore Prometheus plugin with permanent agents, then you should be able uh, to see the data being returned. Uh, but uh, it has um, many limitations, for example, for cloud APIs, because, yeah, well, I think that it would still uh, expose uh, um, agent metrics uh, for uh, ephemeral um, uh, nodes, but I'm not sure about that. Mm -hmm. So but now, metrics, uh, oh, sorry. 
uh, sorry, the, the matrix plugin uh, now corrects the some matrix like CPU usage on the node side. Yeah. Ah, uh, so now there is also a plugin called support core plugin. Ah, ah, ah that that one. Uh, uh, yeah. But so, I believe so. the support plugin. I, I saw I, I saw the plugin and did this, the plugin correct the matrix at one one uh, not continuously, right? Just yeah, continuously. Well, mm, there are only a few tools uh, which correct matrix uh, continuously. And actually, uh, this is not really needed if you want to stop uh, Prometheus monitoring, because Prometheus is a pool-based service. So once in a while, it will uh, connect uh, to your instances, uh, request the data, and you need to provide the data. And on your side, it has to be uh, updated periodically, but not for any request. Oh, OK. It's, uh... Well, maybe for any request, but I don't think that all metrics would be collected in that way. Because some metrics are really heavy when we talk about support core plugin. So, uh, um, okay. Uh, can I again ask the my idea to create the master correct the agent matrix on the master side. Yeah, mm, yeah it's definitely something uh, doable. But my recommendation would be to explore what's already available uh, to see the gaps there and to build a proposal based on this uh, research. Because if you want to create a, a new engine for agent monitoring from scratch, um, then it will be likely an overhead for the implementation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Oh, like I think I, I missed a phrase there. Okay, so it's, you're, you were saying that if, if, cre if you were attempting to create an agent monitoring system from scratch, it would be overhead? Uh, that there was... Yeah, most likely there will be a lot of duplication. Because how current metrics plugin uh, operates, basically it uh, collects uh, various uh, data from the system using, for example, uh, GMX endpoints, uh, using uh, already existing uh, endpoints for collecting agent metrics. And then it exposes everything basically in a uh, tree structure where you can have a lot of information. And this tree structure could be exposed to Prometheus. So if you look into the Prometheus plugin, it's basically it basically wraps metrics to expose to them upon request. And yeah, you could do the same uh, for adding new metrics, but you wouldn't need to write a new engine uh, from scratch. Uh, it's a bit more different uh, for support core plugin because support core plugin also uses metrics to collect some metadata, but uh, for some other uh, reports it uh, just uh, does calculation um, well, by itself and you if there is something you would like to expose to monitoring systems you would like need to move this code elsewhere do I make any sense uh, sorry, I, I, I cannot understand part, part of what you say. Mm -hmm. So I do more further research. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate uh, to ask in the chat. So no need to wait until the next meeting. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, and, and the chat channels are, are quite effective as a way for us to use do question and answer when we're not when we're not in a in this meeting. So that's do you have do you have the URL to the chat channels? Have my, what what channel channel? The do you have the URL oh. to the chat channels? I, I'll just post it here. That way yep. you've you've got it. I don't need to. I didn't even need to ask the question. 
let me just go to links uh, on uh, each project idea page where you can find uh, channels which are specific to this project idea mm. or JSOC seek channel with a backup. Right, good point. So let's let's point to the one for the for this specific remoting monitoring project. Let me go find that. So I'm going to share my screen so that you can see the navigation. I don't think that will do anyone any harm. And other questions can proceed while while I'm. chat on Gitter. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Well, I have if no one is coming far ahead. Uh, so, uh, hello, like, uh, like I submitted my draft for the proposal yeah. uh, and I saw your comments as well. I wanted to discuss about the ad support for generating a new plugin file based on the current Jenkins model. Like I asked this uh, same issue in the last uh, meeting as well, uh, where you told me like uh, the original plan was to get the list of the plugin files so as to provide it to the uh, configuration for the configuration as code plugin, right? Uh, mm -hmm. That this is what I like uh, thought uh, or have understood. So. My question is basically, uh, and I have also commented it, so I thought maybe I go ahead. So, like, uh, uh, what I'm thinking is uh, giving a giving out a YAML file, but in the issue which uh, Tim uh, Tim created in the GitHub issue tracker, he said like uh, he provided like all the three alternatives: uh, standard output, uh, text file, and as well as YAML. So I was mm -hmm. thinking of like all the three. Like, um, is it okay or is it? uh fair to go ahead with it like what do you say yeah i don't think that implementing uh, three outputs is a big overhead because yeah well once you can create a data model you can export this uh, model in any format it shouldn't be a big deal okay okay fair Sounds it, it's probably worth pointing out where those so where those three different data formats would be used so the, the standard out is probably going to be used for just debugging what plugins yeah. are there and what okay. what needs to be done. The the text file format is to create a plugins.txt file that can be used for generating a like a custom Docker image um, with all those plugins in there. And the YAML format is for the Helm chart. So one of the things you can do is list plugins to be installed on startup inside the Helm chart for Jenkins. But that's the use case for those. So just to give you a bit more context on yeah, why there's yeah, three different you. formats. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. And uh, like, can I ask like for the, like if, if uh, I have, I had posted my draft for the proposal, like I don't want to make this meeting about me, but I'll go ahead and uh, say like, ask this question. Like, what do you think? Like, is there any feedback from you guys? Like I saw, but there were not many comments as much I expected for the, for my proposal, for my draft. Like any comments as, a, as such by the mentors and the community members? I think we should really take it uh, offline and handle it synchronously. Because in my case, I just started looking in proposals. Um, yeah, if you want, I can uh, send a few dozen technical questions and clarification requests there. Uh, yeah. But yeah, keep in mind uh, that it's uh, there is no objective to create a, a full specification at this phase. So okay. the idea is to have a proposal which can be evaluated by members. So what it means it has to have clear deliverables. Um, it should be possible to estimate 
uh, uh, time for these deliverables. So to understand whether the proposal is feasible. And mentors uh, should be able to see basically what's your way of thinking and uh, decide uh, whether they want uh, to work with you on this project or not. So that's the main objective. There is no objective to create a full uh, description of what you will do. And most probably it's not possible at this stage anyway. Yeah, but like for uh, for my for the mentors to see what I'm thinking, I should like describe it. Uh, so like it is kind of uh, contradicting each other. Right? Like if uh, if I want my, if I want the mentors to understand what I'm thinking, I should like probably describe it. What I understood from my like from my research or uh, whatever I uh, did. So I yeah. like. So like, isn't it contradicting? Like you also said that it shouldn't be too much uh, technical uh, for the trap. So mentors uh, make a decision based on uh, overall impression. So they meet with you, so let's say these meetings in the charts, etc. cetera. Um, they gather some information from there. If you create some pull requests, etc., cetera, they also gather information from there. And proposal is uh, only a part uh, of that. And your proposal will be also on the part of uh, this decision making. If you have never talked to your mentors uh, during the application period, of course, uh, proposal is uh, the only way uh, to convey your idea. And, um, but I mean, in, for the majority of us, it's it's not the case. So you yeah, just. Uh, focus uh, on uh, following uh, the GSOC guidelines and, and make sure that uh, um, you have all the required information there. And, yeah, you will like to get more feedback. We still have two weeks uh, before the application deadline. Um, and if you don't get feed enough feedback, if you're concerned about particular topics, don't hesitate to ask me in the chat. All right, thank you. And yeah, okay. Thanks. So now, Oleg, you, you guided towards potentially a less precise definition. When we did the Git plugin exercise last year, the, that project, we felt in about middle of it, we felt like, oh, we should have thought about this before. So my experience was the other direction that, gee, I should have, I, we should have had more, asked more questions in the beginning. It's okay that the project during its execution changes its definition somewhat. But can uh, but, you give some hints there? Yeah, there are three phases. First is application period. Second is community bonding. And third is coding. So our expectation that by the time the coding begins, uh, you have clear understanding uh, what to code and how to uh, basically deliver uh, on uh, the changes planned for the first uh, uh, phase. Uh, for that, um, it's not on the application period, there will be a community bonding phase. And community mm -hmm. bonding phase is when you meet with your mentors, discuss uh, what would be the project deliverable, and uh, it's also an opportunity to adjust your project. So, yeah, because uh, anyone has different starting points, uh, sometimes you just need uh, knowledge transfers, sometimes you need to study particular technologies, and you cannot uh, write the entire proposal and specification without studying that. But you are not expected to study uh, all the things before you get accepted. And uh, it's totally understandable. So we basically expect mentors and students to work uh, during the community bonding uh, to scope the project, to do revolution, uh, basically do some reality check. And uh, um, while we discover it together, you can uh, make adjustments in the project plan. Right. And I think that was one of the weaknesses. I'm glad you pointed that out. That was one of the weaknesses we had is I'm not sure we were as effective during the community bonding phase as we should have been in doing that kind of deep detailing of what the next phases would look like. So we were getting familiar with each other, but I'm not sure we did nearly enough specifying and final design during community bonding last year. Good insight. It doesn't have to be final design. Because for many projects, uh, first phase is actually a discovery. Mm. Uh, 
yeah, now it's a bit different because in the previous years, uh, so in 2016, there were two phases, but there were two long phases. Then uh, there were three phases, and now we have uh, two phases, but uh, they're also short, being compared to 2016 or later. So probably it's if you dedicate the first phase uh, to discovery, then you, you will have almost no time to do real thing. So please be uh, cautious about that when you plan uh, your work with mentors. But at the same time, it's still fine to firstly do prototyping and to see whether the ideas work or not and to adjust as you go. Uh, but yeah, you just uh, need to have a clear plan. So on June 7th or when the coding begins, uh, you are not blocked by anything. So you have the required infrastructure you need, uh, you have uh, the required knowledge and you have a plan on what you would do. Because the worst thing which can uh, happen is that coding period starts and you cannot really focus on implementing uh, your project. And this is uh, what mentors and students expect to handle during community bonding. So when you were describing the difference between two phases and three phase, in that case, those are, they used to be three coding phases and now it's two coding phases. Did I understand correctly? Yes. Uh, okay. Thanks. There are two evaluations in this year. Got it. So, well, in principle, it doesn't change too much because yeah, just uh, subject for the planning. But before, basically, if uh, even during the first coding phase, there was no final deliverable produce. So, for example, yeah, there was a prototype, but nothing which would go to production. There were still two phases uh, to basically learn from the prototyping and to implement uh, something final. And many uh, projects actually followed this way. Uh, but yeah, this year it's unlikely an option. So just uh, when you plan uh, your project, if you see that you need some prototyping before you can uh, do design uh, and the final implementation, it's perfectly fine. You can uh, put it in, in the schedule. Uh, and, yeah, that's okay. So deliverables are deliverables, but yes, yeah, sometimes you cannot predict everything. Yeah, I do not know any JSOC project which would uh, go 100% smoothly in terms of delivering everything as it was planned. Uh, actually, I have one more question. Uh, it's regarding the like office hours only. Uh, you had mentioned like you guys keep a, a meeting for configuration as code. I also put up a message regarding like this question. Is there any meeting? But there was no response. So, is there any meeting like that? I am not aware of because I went to see the, on the events calendar and there was no mention of ask. Yeah, there is uh, configuration as code project meeting every two weeks. Okay. But we've been skipping it for the since uh, the new year because uh, there was no much interest. So sometimes it's only me and team available, and uh, we're in a good sync uh, without uh, project meetings. Uh, so we basically decided that if there are no other contributors interested to participate, then we want to host them for now. There is uh, well one time agreement that uh, we would create a configuration as code to infrastructure as code special interest group. Uh, we will just make configuration as code plugin installation manager and other components are part of this uh, seek and uh, probably expand the scope so that uh, there are more contributors invited. But yeah, right now we haven't done that. So for like, for actually, uh, since the, my project uh, is very much related with, as you also mentioned, uh, with configuration as code and I would like, like, but since uh, you are also saying that no, there are not many contributors, but uh, I would like if it is possible to have these meetings, like if you can, or if the yeah, community we, can. We can do that. So okay. yeah, one of the responsibilities of mentors uh, during the community bonding is to ensure that uh, the community bonding happens. It means so that yeah. um, uh, GSOC students get introduced uh, community, to the stakeholders, and that uh, the connections with the community are not limited to, to mentors themselves. 
So there are special interest groups. Uh, yeah, some of them are rather dormant at the moment, but it's not like we don't have contributors working in this space. Uh, because, yeah, for example, what had happened with configuration as code plugin, uh, it reached uh, a certain stage when uh, it addressed uh, the most of the demands. Uh, it became stable enough, uh, and uh, basically the focus of the development switched to other areas. So, for example, plugin installation manager, I wouldn't call it stable now. It definitely improved since we introduced into Southern Thinking, but uh, there are still bugs, so there are still major features. And there are uh, many interested uh, users and contributors in this space. So we can uh, basically uh, host meetings just for that. But for configuration as code plugin development, yes, at some point uh, there was just no interest as is uh, to host it uh, on a regular basis. And don't worry, we have a lot of contributors around. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to those meetings. Thank you. Yeah, and you had mentioned possibly a separate SIG, Oleg, had, had the configurations code team considered just bundling into like the platform SIG? We were talking about uh, three options. So currently, so configuration as code uh, plugin was started under the umbrella of Cloud Native SIG. Ah, uh, the okay. reason was uh, mostly because of, uh, yeah, configuration as code is an essential part for that. At the same time, configuration as code isn't limited to cloud native for deployments. Uh, it's actually um, much more relevant uh, for classic configuration management use cases. And uh, yeah, so there are many areas uh, where it could be applied. We were discussing uh, making it part of uh, Platform Seek, but at, the same, at that time, Platform Seek was pretty parked. Uh, so we decided that it would rather be, be better to have a separate um, SIG, uh, but it's something which could be revisited. Option. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've reached our time. Are there other questions before we conclude? All right. Thanks very much. See us in the chat channels. Uh, conversations are good there to, to, to start those and continue them. Looking forward to pull requests. Looking forward to, yes, we'll get more reviews out for, for proposals that are out there. Thank you for your proposals. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Thank you for the chance. Thanks. Thanks everyone for your comments. Yeah. Thanks.